In this problem, we're told you throw a glob of putty straight up toward the ceiling, which is 3.6 meters above the point where the putty leaves your hand. The initial speed of the putty as it leaves your hand is 9.5 meters per second. A. What is the speed of the putty just before it strikes the ceiling? B. How much time from when it leaves your hand does it take the putty to reach the ceiling? So this is going to be our hand. We've got this putty, right? And we're going to throw it up. And we know that the ceiling is going to be 3.6 meters above where we throw it. So from our hand to the ceiling, right, this will be our ceiling. And we know this is going to be 3.6 meters high. And we also know that when we throw this putty right from our hand, it's going to be traveling, or right when it leaves our hand, it's going to be going 9.5 meters per second. So this is, just a, this is just a drawing of what's going on. Let's go ahead and write down what we're given though first. So when we solve these problems, I'll, I always like to see, I write down all the kinematic variables and then determine whether or not we're given them. So these are the kinematic equations. We just uh, write down every single variable. So V, V sub zero, A, T, and then in this case, it's delta Y. In these equations, they say delta X, but keep in mind, we're moving in the vertical direction. So you write delta Y. So let's determine it, whether or not we have each variable. So the velocity V, so V is gonna be the final velocity. And so keep in mind, they're asking, what is the speed of the putty just before it strikes the ceiling? So this is gonna be the final velocity essentially right before it ends. So V we don't know because they're asking us for it. So we're not given that. What about V sub zero? So V sub zero is the initial velocity. And so we know the initial velocity. They tell us the initial speed or velocity basically of the putty just as it leaves your hand is 9.5 meters per second. So the initial velocity, so the speed right when it leaves our hand is 9.5 meters per second. So we know that. And then acceleration, whenever you're doing a free fall, uh, free fall uh, or vertical problem, right, with speed or whatever, uh, your acceleration, unless specified differently, is going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. That's just uh, what we do for these type of problems. And uh, that's because the force of gravity is 9.8 meters, and it's acting negative, right? It's going down on whatever our object is. And then time, uh, they're asking us in B how much time it's going to take. So keep in mind, we don't know how much time this is going to take because they're asking us for it and they don't tell us. So I'm going to write T equals question mark because we don't know. And then change in Y is just uh, the change in your position in terms of the Y, right? So vertical is just Y. So how much distance do we travel in the Y direction essentially? And so in this case, we travel 3.6 meters up. So your delta Y is just going to be 3.6 meters. So now we've got this given. Uh, let's go ahead and start with A. So what is the speed of the putty just before it strikes the ceiling? And so keep in mind, we determined that this is V. So we're going to be solving for V. And so these are the kinematic equations right here on the right. And so we're going to use one of these equations to solve for it. And so take a look at the variables we're given and determine which one to use. So notice how 1 through 3 all contain the variable T. And we don't know T. So we can't use any of those to solve. And if you look at the fourth one, V uh, we have, or V is what we're solving for. So we need V in it. We have v sub zero, we have a, and we have delta x. So we can use this equation to solve. Let's go ahead and do that. So v is going to be uh, just v squared, right? Because we don't know what it is. Uh, is equal to v sub zero squared. We know v sub zero, 9.5. So 9.5 squared plus 2 times the acceleration, which we determined is the force of gravity, minus 9.8 times our change in, in this case it says change in x, uh, but we're really dealing with y, so our change in y, 3.6. So if you go ahead and do this, 9.5 squared plus 2 times minus 9.8 times 3.6, and then keep in mind that we're going to square or square root this, right? Because if we want to get rid of this squared here, we can square root both sides. So it's really going to be the square root of this thing right here. So if you square root this, you're going to get that v equals 4.8. 4, 3, 7, 3, and so on. I'm going to go ahead and round to this place right here. So I'm going to move it up to a 4, 4.44. And then the units for this, uh, it's going to just be meters per second, right? Because velocity is changed in distance over change in time, or just time, right? So distance is measured in meters. This is measured in seconds. So that's that. So this is going to be your answer to A. Let's go ahead and move on to B now. So B is how much time, so we're trying to solve for T now. I'm going to write this up here, so 4.44. 4. 
meters per second because we're going to use this to solve for the next one. So now we're solving for T. So if you take a look at these equations here, we can use any of them except for the last one because it doesn't contain T, but we can use any of these. I'm going to choose the top one right here, which is V equals V sub zero plus A times T, just because I think it's the easiest one to solve. Notice how we're get, we have all these variables. We just solve for V, right? 4.44. We know V sub zero and we know A and we're solving for T, which is the time. So V is going to be 4.44 which equals V sub zero, 9.5 plus A, right? And so we're adding a negative 9.8. So it's just going to be minus and then times T. So we need to solve for T and we got to get it by itself. So I'm going to minus 9.5 from both sides. 4.44 minus 9.5 is minus 5.06. That's going to be equal to minus 9.8 T. And if we want to get T by itself, divide both sides by minus 9.8. So t is going to be equal to minus 5.06 divided by minus 9.8. So this is going to be, if we go ahead and divide this, uh, minus 5.06 divided by minus 9.8, it's going to be 0 0.51632 and so on. I'm going to round this just to 52. You can round it however you want. So 0 0.52. And then keep in mind what units this is. This is time. The time unit we're using is in seconds, so 0.52 seconds. So this right here is going to be your answer to B. And so yeah, hopefully you found this video useful.